All right. So welcome to the second part uh, of our AC machines discussion where we talk about the uh, underlying physics, uh, primarily the rotating magnetic field uh, within an AC machine. Uh, now, last time uh, in the previous video, we talked about torque, gen torque generation and how the flux density of the stator and the flux density of the rotor interact in, a, uh, in generating our induced torque. Right, and then we said uh, there's a there's an angle relationship that we need to consider if we are uh, wanting to generate optimal torque, uh, and then these vectors need to be at 90 degrees of each other, which gives you uh, maximum torque for that configuration. All right, uh, so with that, uh, we're going to move on uh, to the discussion of how this rotating field is established now uh, we need two things here in order to establish our rotating magnetic field we need a set of three phase currents typically they in most cases they're going to be balanced or we at least try to get them to be as balanced as possible and then we need three phase set of windings uh, now, we talked about the different winding patterns, uh, concentrated versus uh, sinusoidal windings. Uh, in this discussion, we will just focus on the concentrated windings uh, as we are learning the fundamentals. When you go into an advanced class, uh, like in a graduate level, you can actually substitute uh, the sinusoidal function in place of the concentrated windings. Okay. Uh, now, here we are considering only the stator and the reason we call them, them a three-phase winding is because you can see that the A and the B and the C, they are 120 degrees apart and you can see that they all have the cross which means the current is going in, right? The current is going in and those three windings are 120 degrees apart for each of the A winding, there is a return conductor or return set of conductors, which are again 120 degrees out of phase from the corresponding B prime and C prime set of windings. Now, what we do have to remember is these windings go through and return from the back of the motor. So if I try to explain this a little bit, so Let's say we have a circular face and then, you know, like a cylindrical machine construction. Uh, now these windings are placed such that they go through. So if there's a slot here, they are wound like that. And then they go back. So we have a circular face at the back. And then they come back to the front like that. Okay, so they are wound like this way. So if there are multiple conductors, they could be wound in such a way. Okay, so they have, and there are other, other design factors that you have to consider, fractional pitch, full pitch, things like that. And we are not going to go into that much of detail in this discussion going for a basic understanding. Now, having these three phase windings, we can represent them such that they are spatially at a certain angle offset. Okay, we can say the, the vectors are placed, depending on the location, we can say the, the winding, A winding is 120 degrees out of phase, and then the C winding is another uh, 120 out of phase from B or 240 degrees out of phase from A. Okay, so let's set that aside for a little bit and then let's look at our currents. Okay, let's, let's look at our currents. Now, when we look at our currents, we can see that we have IAA prime, uh, which is a time varying function which has an amplitude of I m and then omega t. The phase is zero, zero phase. That's the 
uh, current that we are using as our reference. Now our BB prime it's uh, 120 degrees or 2 pi over 3 radians lagging uh, with respect to AA uh, IA and then ICC is 240 lagging behind IA and 120 behind IB. Okay, so they, these are called balanced set of currents, uh, and if you if you add the three, you're going to get zero. Okay, so that zero sequence current uh, is 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 going to be zero for the balanced set of currents. All right, now so we have currents flowing through a three phase winding. So how do we proceed? In order to understand how that magnetic fields are established, we do need to go back to our some of our basics, uh, primarily uh, Ampere's law. Okay. Uh, now, when we look at a, a core with a coil wound around it, when we needed to find the magnetic field intensity, uh, we used Ampere's law, and when we followed the closed loop path through the core and we found our HDL or integral of HDL equals to N times I. Okay, so for concentrated windings, this is going to be a fixed number, or you can substitute an approximate based on Fourier analysis. Uh, however, our current I uh, is going to be sinusoidal, no matter what, in this case, right? Uh, so this is the basic concept. Uh, now we need to apply that to our stator. The machine status. I'm just drawing a very simple structure here uh, and of course similar to our transformer core even though it's round you're going to see some material here the stator material you're going to see a very small air gap and then you see the rotor material and then uh, you have another air gap and then the flux return path. So now you can apply Ampere's law around this loop and come up with your HAA prime uh, flux intensity value. I won't go uh, and do that, but I'll start by approximating into this equation. Okay, we'll start with this flux intensity equation uh, because that uh, this uh, am applying Ampere's law involves a little bit more math, uh, and we don't want to go that far in this discussion. So when we look at the AA winding flux intensity, you can say we have a certain amplitude, HM, and then time varying, time varying, and then also we have a spatial orientation, EJ0. So it's aligned in that direction. We are treating this axis through the machine, this as zero degrees or zero radians. Okay, so that axis as zero. So our flux intensity along this, this line is zero degrees spatially. Okay, and it has zero phase in the current as well. Okay, we need to note that uh, because for B and C it's somewhat different. Okay, all right. So that's based on uh, Ampere's law. We know what HAA a -A prime is. So let's see what the three uh, flux in magnetic flux intensities look like. Okay, so for A A prime, I, I'm using the color colors here so that we can correlate them properly. H A A prime uh, is sine omega t in this direction and has a phase of zero spatially. For B B prime, it in, in the flux in intensity, it's a sinusoidal function where it has a phase of negative 2 pi over 3. And spatially, it's at 2 pi by 3 angle. Okay, so that's 2 pi by 3 spatially. Same goes for C, C prime. It has uh, another phase uh, offset spatially 4 pi by 3, as well as the current base phase uh, that it induces is the uh, negative 4 by pi 3 within the sine waveform. So we have these three flux intensities. All right, we have three flux intensities due to the current flow through 
the winding, the three phase windings. Now, we know that uh, for a given type of material, we can use B equals mu H and come up with the three flux densities co corresponding to that flux intensity value. Okay, uh, so this is our three flux intensities. I hope this is fairly straightforward. Uh, and what we're trying to do here next is let's see at a given point in time. Okay, at a given point in time, what will the flux intensities for each winding look like? And then what will the net flux intensity for that? time look like okay so we look at the at a given time we look at the net flux uh, intensity and then we'll uh, advance time a little bit and we'll, we can see what will happen with time to that flux net flux intensity vector all right so that's the plan so here we are looking at t equals zero so t equals zero sine zero so uh, baa prime becomes zero no contribution to the net flux okay net flux is basically the sum of all three flux uh, flux density vectors but vectorial sum okay we need to consider them treat them as vectors uh, and then here uh, bb prime so we have uh, the vector in this direction uh, even though we consider positive in in the left hand side you know towards up up uh, we get a negative value within the sign so we are uh, in the opposite direction all right and then uh, same goes for cc prime uh, we consider this to be the positive direction therefore we have a negative current i think that's right yeah that's right so we have three vectors one of them is zero when we consider the vectorial sum you see that the total flux vector, flux density vector points down and it's three over two bn 1.5 bn okay that's the net flux uh, that we have because these are uh, pi by six or 30 degree angles okay so that is for t equals zero all right now let's advance time let's uh, let's say our time is uh, 1 over omega times pi by 2 i conveniently chose omega t to be pi by 2 to see what happens uh, and in that case we will get three vectors okay all three vectors are there and we're going to see uh, a prime vector along that zero axis zero phase uh, no angle variation there uh, and then again uh, bb prime in this direction and cc prime uh, change direction there because of the sign change it's in positive direction now. okay and then uh, when we consider the vectorial sum we're going to see again 1.5 bm but now it's pointing in that direction so initially at t equals zero it was pointing down right it was pointing this direction and over time the amplitude didn't change it basically rotated to this location okay so i think you guys are seeing uh, hopefully you are seeing what i'm trying to get here uh, so with uh, with the uh, as time passes because of the configuration of the windings and the currents this will result in a flux density that rotates at a certain frequency right we don't know the relationship just yet so i'm just showing you that it did rotate with time so if you are to try omega t equals pi it's going to be pointing in up in this up direction if you are to try omega t equals what 3 pi over 2 is going to be in this direction. So it's going to continue as you change time, as you increase time. So it's going to go round and round. Uh, so that's kind of a crude way of showing what's going to happen to the net flux. But I'm going to show mathematically that we do have that same relationship. Okay. 
So, uh, so looking at the total or the net flux, we can mathematically write this equation. Uh, and then we can now substitute the three flux density values, same amplitude, because they are balanced, hopefully. Uh, and we can use Euler's notation and convert them to complex exponentials and solve, uh, or you can use some uh, trig identities to uh, simplify this too. Either way, uh, what you will get is you're going to get this final equation this final equation and I'm going to leave you to do the math uh, if you are interested so you're going to get this final equation which is basically a complex exponential or a vector that rotates with time at the frequency omega which is the frequency of our currents the electrical frequency right this it's rotating at the electrical frequency uh, and at, it's starting at a phase of negative pi by 2 and it makes sense because we said t this is our zero degree and then at t equals zero it's going to be pointing in that direction okay so now this aligns with uh, the basic calculations that we did uh, and it's saying that the amplitude remains the same 1.5 I'm missing something. 1.5 bm. Yeah, that I'm missing, right? So bm and bm. So 1.5 bm amplitude remains the flux density, uh, and then it's a rotating phase or a rotating vector, uh, the net flux. All right. Uh, so this is the the rotating uh, magnet flux density concept that's behind all AC machines, synchronous and asynchronous, uh, that helps us generate torque. Okay, now depending on how we can control them, basically if we can control these flux densities through current, now we can actually orient our uh, vectors in any direction possible, either to generate optimal torque or even to reduce torque uh, even to drive the torque to zero okay so so much so much controllable controllability if you can control uh, the currents controllability not in the sense of regular control theory controllability perspective uh, flexibility in terms of controls all right uh, so very interesting relationship i encourage you to try to derive or try to simplify the expression as shown here uh, and I hope you guys enjoyed this please let me know what you think uh, and if there's any topics that that are of interest to you that want to be discussed we will be going into a great deal of uh, discussion in field oriented control and uh, and in AC induction machines okay uh, so thank you uh, see you soon